hello and welcome back to A Better World. This is your host, Mitchell J. Rabin, and we're very glad that you're joining us again today. Today we're going to have another very interesting show. We have invited onto the show Jackie Lewis, who runs something at Day Spa, a very special spiritually oriented spa down in Jamaica called Jackie's on the Reef. Jackie's been written up in the travel section of the New York Times. She's been in the Oprah magazine. She's been everywhere. She's a real hero, actually, in so many ways. She's such an interesting woman. I have had the pleasure of knowing Jackie. We've known each other for over 15 years when we were on a very special spiritual journey together down in the Amazon and in Peru, Machu Picchu for Harmonic Convergence. And we've stayed in touch over the years and just have been watching each other develop over the years and it's been very exciting and what Jackie has come up with is a place that is really an oasis and she'll be speaking to us about that on this show. You can learn about it for yourselves and learn about a place that's really very special, a unique spot in the universe for people to come and get re relaxed and refreshed and rejuvenated and spiritually renewed. Well, so great to have you. Yeah, it's wonderful God. to see you again. Yeah. It really has been a long time. When you need a place to rest your mind and renew your spirit, head for Jackie's on the Reef. Jackie's is on Jamaica's western coast in Negril. The focus here is in the connection between mind, body, and spirit. What kind of treatments are your favorites here? Uh, the massages, and I love the classes. To me, that's giving myself a treatment when I do the yoga in the morning or Tai Chi. It's very relaxing and sets the tone for the day. Jackie's is literally a dream come true for owner Jacqueline Lewis. Ten years ago, she owned a profitable boutique in Manhattan's artsy Soho district. Jackie was living large, but feeling kind of small. Something in her life was missing. When a business deal fell through, Jackie closed her shop and moved to Jamaica. Why would you choose to create a spa, of all things? Was it the fact that in the fashion world, everything was about the external beauty? Well. I felt what had happened was I traveled all over the world and every time I would go someplace, I always would look for a place where I could meditate and get in tune with myself. Jackie's is different from the spa atmosphere at the larger hotel chains. The rooms are simple, yet elegantly furnished. Healthy meals offering a variety of the island's fruits and vegetables are prepared fresh daily, and every day begins with yoga and daiji. The larger spas are helping people kind of from the outside, which is an area in which I understand very much because that's where I work. What I am attempting to do is help people from the inside. How do you feel after you've spent some time here? Well, I feel much more relaxed, much more at ease with myself and um, with my environment. And I go back feeling much calmer and t more together. Spa amenities at Jackie's include everything from manicures and massages to salt baths and past life regressions. I opted to go with more traditional pampering. You got it, I'm sleeping. The breeze, the surf, and a great massage put me in La La Land. Then Jackie briefly brought me back to the land of the living. This is a wild rosemary that we use to work the skin to take the toxics out of the body. This is very similar to the, the blood Russian bath. bath. Yeah. Yeah, the plates of. But I don't, there's no oak leaves here in Jamaica, so I've yeah. used wild rosemary, which does the same thing. It has the same effect on the body. It takes out the toxics. Oh, good. If this looks as good to you as it felt to me, book now because rooms go quickly. When people come out of the civilization, uh, Western civilization, to come to a spa like Jackie's on yeah. the Reef, they are coming out exhausted, you know, um, very disconnected to their inner selves. Yes. And so we are really using nature to de uh, kind of like decompress you or de, de yes. stress you to bring you back into your inner self, yes. you know. And so 
the natural rhythm of things. Right. And nature is so important for that. So we're right on the, on the water. There are all kinds of beautiful birds. There are, you know, the hermit crabs. And as I say to many guests, when you can slow down enough to be able to sit and watch a hermit crab try to walk backwards up a little step, then you know you're on track. Yep. You know? And yep. we have a great a, measure. We had a very... And find it fascinating. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like still in your mind. It's a meditation totally. when, you're, when you're really dealing with totally. nature. We had uh, some guests recently, and there are these love bugs that they run around. They're red and black, and they're connected to each other. So one night we were all sitting at the table talking about these bugs, and this new guest came in, and they, she sat there, and she was, what are these people, mad? And l two days later she said, you know, when I first came in and you were talking about these bugs, I thought there was something <laughs> you guys wrong were with buggy. it. Right. And she says, Now I see what you mean. Two days of really just, you know, taking a little time yeah. with myself. I've been, been able to bring myself down to a point where I can look at a bug and watch it. Yeah. You know, because you don't have the time here in New York. You're running, running here, running there. You're exhausted. You know. Oh, I totally know what you mean. It's amazing. Totally. I've had that experience actually at the bottom of the uh, Grand Canyon. Yes. Watching bugs and beetles mm -hmm. in the desert, and but it's the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You slow down enough to actually watch and be part of the rhythms of nature. True. You know, you, mm -hmm. you really enter that space. So that's the thing that people do there. In two days, she got decompressed pretty quickly. Yeah? Well, she began the process. You yeah. know, in two days, she began to really see. And then it deepens. And then it deepens, yes. And in the evenings, like after we sit on the steps or we go out and watch the stars, and I can point out different constellations. In fact, I'm looking for an astronomer to come in once a week and uh, give us some type of, uh, you a know, lesson. lessons on yeah. the sky. Because, you know, here on Earth, we are disconnected from everything. We don't realize yeah. that, you know, there is another whole dimension of life. And so people don't really realize, they don't see the stars, they don't see the moon, they don't know the, even the rhythm of the moon. You know, like for instance, I had someone call me just from the place two days ago, and there was a guest there saying, why was the moon, it was closer to the uh, horizon the night before, and then now it's up a little higher. Why? And I was explaining that, you know, a new moon, when it first comes up, it sets very quickly. And then each day it's maybe a little higher in the heavens until the full moon, it's all the way over to the east and it rises, mm -hmm. you know. At well, it has the appearance of rising. Well, it, it yeah. actually, yeah, it rises at night, you know, so you see the moon because we're right on the horizon, so sure. we see everything. Sure. So it's just amazing, you know, the cycle of the moon, but we don't know it. Totally. 14 days dark and 14 days light. Yeah. We have no idea what really goes on in our planet and in our universe. Or around us, uh -huh. exactly. But people start to learn it yes. when they arrive at right. Jackie's, you know. Now you have classes as well, right? You have Tai Chi Chuan, you have Qigong or yoga. Yoga. We have meditation. I teach a breathing class, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then we invite different practitioners come, to come in to yes. teach different classes depending on, you know, if, if there's someone around that can teach something else. Uh, we have... Right. Yoga. I spoke with you about coming down myself and yes. learning some classes. Right. That would yeah. be wonderful. Yeah. I'd love Very, to. Yes. We have a young lady who does African dance class. There's a gentleman who teaches Africa. Uh, well, actually, it's Naya Bingi drumming. It's mm -hmm. you know the uh, the Rastafarian beat, the mm -hmm. heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So he teaches a class, and then at night we sit around the fire. There's a fire that burns every night, and we sit there and we drum or we tell tell stories. We just so laugh, in, or else we'll maybe do a little ceremony and throw your wishes or yours or what yeah. you want to release into the fire, and you know it's just. Being a child again. Yeah. That's really what it is, you yeah. know, learning how to laugh and enjoy life. It's so important. Oh, Jackie, it, I'm, I'm getting connected to it just in sitting here speaking with you. You know, it's got an energy of simplicity as you play, simplicity and, and beauty. Absolutely. I think that, you know, the average, I would say the average human being has not really they don't play once you get so serious in making money and 
living in your lives. Sure. And I'm not knocking that because I've had to go through that myself. You well, know? you've gone through. Why don't you give our audience, because I, I kind of spoke about you as a hero. And I really think that in some ways you are. I mean, you've been walking a certain hero's path in many ways. After all, you know, in your generation, becoming a very successful uh, businesswoman in the field of design and fashion in New York City, you know, as a black woman, no less, dealing with all of the sharks, et cetera. <laughs> I don't mean on the bays of Jamaica, but you know, but but New York City. Yeah, right. You know, and you have led, you know, it's been very memorable what you've gone through to a certain epiphany, if you will, where you realize that your next step is something 100% different from being a, a successful businesswoman here and leaving this world. Mm -hmm. So you really do model a certain kind of life, lifestyle, and set of values. But I think it's really useful for people to know about. Oh my, well thank you. Yeah. You know, you never think about it when you're living it. You exactly, know, you're so. just in the middle of it, you know. <laughs> well, give us a little brief sketch, if you would, of, of just what, where you were and where you went. Well, see, um, I had a little, uh, well, I started out, I guess, what, 1964, I had a little clothing store in St. Mark's Place originally. And, um, after, you know, I, that was my first little store. And at the time, let's see now, where was I working? I was working, I, I had worked at the Village Gate before that as a hostess and bookkeeper. So by the time I opened my store in 64, I was working at, was it Max's Kansas City at that time? I guess I was. No, was it Max's Kansas City? Anyway, I was working in the Village as a, as a waitress and running my, my uh, business. And then I was robbed and I went to Europe for two years and did modeling and mm. I did films and so forth from 66 to 68. And then uh, in 68 I decided to return back to New York. And so I came back to New York and I started working at Max's Kansas City then with Mickey who was the owner of, uh, of Max's, the hero for everyone really at that time. And mm -hmm. then um, as I, when I opened the store, it, was, it started out on St. Mark's Place, and then I was there for four years, and then in 72, I moved to Soho, and I was the first store in Soho. And at that point, you know, there was nothing but trucks, you know, and we had this very, very beautiful, it was like about... It was manufacturing then. Right, only manufacturing, yeah. and it was this very beautiful store with carpet, as people describe, this deep, this brown uh, carpet, and uh, I think the room, it was like 35 by 90, the, the space. So it was this huge space. And all I did was I just hung things on the wall and uh, for display, you know, for clothes, which is totally, it yeah. was totally revolutionary for as far as, you know, display. Yeah. And I'll never forget, a gentleman yeah. came into the store, Peter Barton, who was a, a men's, um, well, manufacturing men's fa uh, fashion. Right. And he walked in the store. He said, well, Jackie, how are you going to display? I mean, this is ridiculous. I've never seen anything like this. You know, a big place like this. I'm saying, I I'm going to do it. So I hung the clothes all very beautifully on the wall. And then shoes, we would stack the stacks of shoes and put the shoe on top. No one had ever done anything, you know, had, had displayed like this. But this is the way it was. That's what you were doing. Right. It's just another innovation among many. Mm -hmm. And then you actually, from doing, running the Soho store, which was like a total success. Right. You went to Peru. Yeah. When see. we met. Right. I um, closed the store in 87 because my rent went from five to $20,000 a month. And I, I realized I was not going to work hard for anyone. Of course, I wanted to go on, but you know, something said, just move forward, girlfriend. You know, get out of the, get out of the business and sure. do what you really want to do. A Let the vistas open up. Right. So I had wanted to do a holistic spa, but I didn't know what holistic was, or nor did I. I had never been to a spa, but I, I had traveled the world, and I wanted to have a place for people that could come and they could sit meditate, do whatever they want to yes. do without being disturbed, you know, yeah. getting a massage. And, and traveling all over the world, I'd never found a place to do that except in ashrams. And I felt that an ashram was too small. It was not that it's anything wrong with it, but you know, sometimes people... Perhaps too specific a context yes. with... Uh 
they're just a, kind of a highly focused uh, perspective or, or um, service, if you will. Well, I kind of felt that, you know, people, I wanted to be able to touch a wider range when you start being so yes, specific. exactly. And saying you can only do this and you can't do that and you can't do this, I was not going to touch that many people. Yeah. So, um, it limits your market. It, yes, it limited the market. And I felt there would be a lot of people like myself who at the time I smoked cigarettes. And, you know, at the time that I drank a little bit of wine, I felt that why, that does not say that what your spirituality is, where your heart is, if, if you smoke or if you drink. So I want to reach more of a, a larger base of people. Sure. So that's why sure. I kind of like so this, start this place. Yeah. And... Also, you have the benefits of real traditional spa treatments right. that you've got at your place. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. But primarily... Massage, facials, things of that sort? Yes, we do massage. We do three times types of massages. We do a, just a plain massage. We do aromatherapy massage, and we do hot rock massage. And then we do past life regressions. We do Reiki. We do... Um, Ear candling, we do body scrubs, which I took from my the the Ten Street Baths, their concept of you know the plat the plaza. Right. So but I do the same thing outdoors Plots. with the with a rosemary brush. With rosemary, yeah. Uh-huh. And so uh, Which grows right there. Right there, we just pick it. So that's quite wonderful. So highly aromatic. Very and then we what I do is I boil I use a lot of herbs, five different herbs from the land. We so it's papaya leaf, rosemary leaf of life, uh, jack in the bush, and castor oil bush. And we, we boil it, and that's what I use to scrub you. It wow. takes all the toxins out of your, wow. you know. So it's very, very, nice. um, very, very cleansing. Cleansing. Yes. And you're right yeah. on the ocean, so all of that bad yeah. negative can just go out to the sea. Yeah. You know? Oh. So people really come and they relax, and you get a lot of people from New York. Or where do you well, get a lot of people? When here recently, since there was the Times article, which we came out in December 31st, we've gotten a really very large group of uh, America, I mean New Yorkers, coming in, which is really nice. But then, you know, of course, New Yorkers are probably the hardest to satisfy, you know, because they are accustomed to wanting everything and right now, and to slow them down. Yes. Is quite you a can't challenge. Can't give them everything right now. Yeah, it's a challenge. You know, <laughs> face I, it out. So we have to, you know, keep them, cajole them, to, to slow them down, just to the point of being able to yeah. relax. You know, yeah. because as I say, you come out of New York. New York breeds the winners, and when you're a winner, you're really tense. You know, you're yeah. you're you've got a lot of pressures on you, and you don't realize yeah. how much pressure you have until you step off of the. The, tr the fast track That's right. and attempt to sit down and you'll find that you're so nervous. Isn't that true? So that's what we really attempt to do is just help you to kind of like pull it all together and go within. And now you're going to be doing another level uh, of work which is with the live blood cell analysis, is yes. that correct? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. That's like one of the newer yeah. things, offerings. Right. I just brought, I just got a, one of the live blood cell test machines, the, the, the uh, microscope. microscope uh -huh. to, right, dark field microscope. And a young lady by the name of Sainya is going to be doing nutritional um, counseling as well as the live blood cell test. Beautiful. So we'll help, be able to help people to, you know, take them to another level to look at really what's going on within their bodies, you know, how you can change your diet. Exactly. When you get down to the level of blood, you see the effect that being a so-called winner has, mm -hmm. that what the tension does, what the stress does, mm -hmm. what nutrition does. You see the way your metabolism works or doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You see how you breathe or don't breathe. You see everything shows up. Virtually everything. In the blood. Show blood. Yes. Uh -huh. And it's what we received from our parentage, our lineage, mm -hmm. uh, virtually our genetics. And then, of course, what we do in our own lives to impact, right. to either uh, make the blood healthier and nice, beautiful, round blood cells, or sticky, right. stuck together. And each one is its own physiological and psychological profile, if you will. That's so true. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a very beautiful service to offer 
your people. In fact, if you do a before and after, you can really get a measurement, Jackie, of the effect of Jackie's on the reef. Like when, the, you know? Yes. You give them a test when they first arrive off the plane, they arrive, they get uh, an idea. Exactly. And you put it on videotape. And then five days later or seven days later, when they're getting ready to leave, you show that blood to them again. And they will see oh, in a really measurable way what effect Jackie's on the reef and your entire program has had in has their a, lives. What a brilliant idea. Thank you. I Absolutely. hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Wow. That's why there's no dispute. There's, it's very clear. This is what happens when you come and I you mean, kick yeah. back Jackie style. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a whole program already that's been in place now for a few years, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. you've been written up in Oprah's magazine, <laughs> you know? <laughs> People love you. <laughs> that's nice to know, you know? Yeah. It really is. It really is. So you've had, tell us a little bit about some of the people who have come and how they've enjoyed themselves. Well, we've had some wonderful people that have come in and uh, we recently had a woman who came, uh, she was coming out of Palestine. She worked for the World Bank and so she had been under the gun for like months oh, God. and they finally got her out and so she came in to Jackie's for like two weeks and to watch her go through, of course, you know, that, that, that decompression of, you know, of the tenseness and the fears and the first couple of nights she couldn't sleep and she was, you know, quite nervous and then um, she, she, you know, started crying mm. and the, the purging the, of the fear of, you know, of what she had gone through. And by the time she left, she was really looking fantastic. You know, so to, to watch this, it's so wonderful to watch the transition that people make, you yeah. know, while they're there. And if they spend, you know, spend a little time, you can see what's yeah. going on, you know, and you can help them much better. But the average day, most people come in for four days to a week. There's a payment in that for you that goes beyond anything the material world has to offer. True. Because when you see that you are taking people through this process mm -hmm. in a, a relatively short amount of time, mm -hmm. and as you say, decompressing them, and one of my specialties, and I, I don't know if you know, I used to work with Gary Nall for years oh. when I had my own healing center, mm -hmm. my own called Center for Creative Well-Being, and I worked with Gary teaching stress management and stuff of that sort, and down at his ranch down in Texas and okay. work with large groups of people and bring them through a process similar to what mm -hmm. you're doing there. There's more of an emphasis perhaps on food, but maybe not as good food as you've got down there. I don't know, <laughs> but you'll have to tell us about that too. Uh, but it was just remarkable to see what happens to people when they're given a chance mm -hmm. to be in their own natural self in nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They just, they blossom, yeah, literally they do. blossom. Yeah. Well, I think we're so disconnected to nature here because it's a, you know, it's a concrete jungle. Definitely. So you, you don't hear the birds, you don't. No. Listen, I even hear have people come in who primarily are from New York or in, in big, you know, urban, place, urban places. Centers, yeah. And the water sometimes is very rough out, right out in front. And it's roaring, let's yeah. say. I've had people say they couldn't sleep because they're not accustomed to the sound. So I'm saying to them, but yeah, but you're accustomed to the sounds of sirens. You're accustomed to the sounds of people screaming and holler, but yet and still nature yeah. bothers you. Exactly. You know, so that's, that's a very, it's a sad state yeah. to say about the human you know, being that's that right. they can't deal with nature. The urban dweller. Right. Mm -hmm. That's really true. So you're providing a fabulous service. In our last few minutes, give us some idea of what you all eat down there. It's always a favorite subject to people, right? right. Well, I've <laughs> created my say. own little um, menus, like my own food. So I've kind of like I've eaten all. I, I love to go to different restaurants and take different ideas from it. So let's say uh, a maybe a, a one night we might have um, what would be a good. We we'd must have a lot of fish, huh? Mm -hmm. we, we do fish, we either we do it with tandoori sauce, or at, but we grill everything, so tandoori mm -hmm. or else we marinate everything starting early in the day mm -hmm. with olive oil and rosemary. Let's say we'd have a bonita steak or a dolphin steak, 
and then we would do uh, pasta with garlic oil and and uh, olives you know mixed yeah. then we would do possibly I call it my white salad so we're using the daikon and julienne in it and then the uh, chocho which is a, a fruit which is a West Indian fruit it looks like a pear shaped like a pear but it's a white uh, substance so we we dice that and then I use green uh, red onions and maybe yellow sweet peppers mm. and we'll do a uh, lemon and honey dressing for that and then we'd maybe do uh, what broccoli you know just steam just a little bit yeah. with uh, onion rings and garlic you know so we I use a lot of herbs for my seasoning so I bring in a lot of things from here right and we do but you also use a lot of the um, native stuff yes yes papaya yes the fruits and vegetables of the land mm -hmm. and the fish of course you right know. so we so everything is natural mouth watering yes it's all natural and emphasis on good quality food absolutely yeah oh, the guests great. love our food they, it's great. They, I'm in the process sure of doing a cookbook, in, in fact. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, fabulous, fabulous. Well, listen, I, I can't wait to go and do some teaching and playing and becoming a child again. <laughs> and I can't I'll wait have to you have to have you, right. <laughs> What? I can't wait to have you. <laughs> really? Thank you. Thank you. We'll do it. We'll do it. Definitely. We'll be in touch. Fabulous. It's been great having you on, Jackie. Well, it's been wonderful, Mitch. I'm so happy to see you again and to see yeah. you in this, you know, environment. It's just wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank and you. what you're doing, you know, helping to educate others is so special. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm glad we had a chance to educate people about Jackie's on the Reef. So thanks for being here. Thank you. And uh, we'll be broadcasting this and letting people know across the about what you're doing. Thank you. Blessings. God bless. Wow, I hope you enjoyed that like I did. What, what a time just fantasizing about being at Jackie's on the Reef. Thanks so much for joining us, and uh, you'll see some contact information for Jackie's on the Reef right after this. And uh, think about it. Why just stay in New York or these urban places when you could be hanging out with Jackie? Thanks so much for joining us. I look forward to seeing you all next week.